person listening to this show that doesn't know my next guest, maybe you bought a shirt off him. Maybe he put you into a suit for your wedding day or for some other special occasion. Maybe you've encountered him recently as something of an internet sensation. Could only be Eamon Cunningham from EJ's Menswear. Eamon, good morning to you. How are you, Daniel? Good. How are you? Um, great and intrigued and delighted that you've taken the time this morning to come in and, and have a bit of a chat with us. I want to start with what I mentioned there, that last point. You have become something of an internet sensation. For anybody who hasn't seen some of the videos that you've been doing and posting online, what are they and why do you do them? The whole social media side of things for us now in EJ Men's or is really big and very, very strong. You know, our, our Facebook page is really strong and there's a lot of focus on it and that. It started off as a bit of a fun thing. You know, to launch a sale, you know, we have we have to do something different to catch people's imagination or whatever. So I think the first one we done was I came through with a sign at the back of the shop with with a chainsaw. So we were cutting everything in half. It it, it helps us to launch to launch our half price sale. So it was everything was half, so we cut this in half. Then the next one I came through the sign on a Honda fifty and the next one I done a bit of karate and you know, the last one, you, you know, were McGregor. Con you were Conor McGregor esque in the last yeah. one. It was lovely. He's very topical at the moment, and it was just a week after he had his fight over in over in Vegas and that. So I thought, look at, uh, I was looking at myself in the mirror one night, and I thought to myself, I wonder could I pull this off? Yeah, maybe could I do a bit of Conor McGregor? So <laughs> it's all look at it's. So we went for it anyway, and it worked out really, really well. As I've as I've been, or I'd say, they're nearly so bad they're good. Like we enjoyed them, we we do them in one take. It launches our half price sale. When some when someone sees you know a big video like that, they know there's something happening in Aegis. So tell us a, a little bit for again people who may not have seen them. What length are they? The length normally you know like uh, one minute maybe max one and a half minutes max. There's a lot of kind of you know trying beforehand, a lot of preparation, but like we only have one sign. Mm. We give our big half price sale. That's the focus. That's the start of our ad. And, you know, I, I managed to come through it, whether it be with a chainsaw and a Honda 50 or jump through it or box my way through it as I did with McGregor. So once I come through that sign, I just got to keep going. So, and, you know, put the whole lot together and, the, you know, my lack of acting skills, and I'm afraid, they just said, no, you know, we get a laugh out of it. I get a good laugh myself. So. But, you know, I know it's a laugh. I know it's funny. Yeah, but yeah. in a very serious business term, it's been hugely successful. It's really helped put you into people's Facebook feed on a daily basis. How many sort of likes have you got in your most successful one of those? How many views would you have got? With the Conor McGregor one, we we have over a quarter of a million. A quarter of a million views, and that's only on our own page, but a lot of the national press and further afield picked up on it. You know, you had Joe.ie, you had Irish Times, Irish Independent, radio stations in Dublin were rigging us. They all had it on their own site. So from the views on our own, 255,000 is you kind of we moved on from a point it could even be more but does it translate to the bottom line because to get that sort of reach that sort of exposure that's amazing in terms of um, effect on your bottom line mm -hmm. do you see more people coming in do you see a pickup in business when you do one of these videos yeah like certainly it's like at the stage it's at now because we've done so many of them it's nearly a signal look EJ's big sale is on. We only have two big sales a year. We, you know, one in August and one in January or whatever. Like in between that, like the rag trade is a really, really serious business, mm. and we work really hard at our business. And we, you know, it's we're, it's like the men's were business. You know, we're we're servicing people for weddings or you know big events and whatever, and we take it really, really serious. The video thing is something that has started. And it was a fun thing, and it's it has developed. It catches people's imagination and whatever. It gets people talking about it in the pubs, in the clubs. You see, ages, you know, launched the sale again, had the big video, blah blah blah. But in between all that, we work really hard our business. You know, we take it really, really serious. Well, Daniel. well let's go back because mm -hmm. you're 21 this year, and I don't yeah, mean yeah, you personally, yeah. although you're, 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 you yeah, pass yeah, easily yeah, for yeah. Conor McGregor, not a bother on you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you're 21 years in business in Sligo this yeah, year. Yeah. Tell me about how that, as you call it, the rag trade has changed in this area across the northwest. And I know the big move is the big next step that you're taking isn't to you know an online shop and I want to chat yeah, about yeah. that. But yeah, just yeah. the last 21 years, bring us through that. 
Uh, the last 21 years, it, uh, my first start, it doesn't seem like 21 years, but I opened up in 1994. I was after serving 17 years in Horns Bends where um, we traded in Castle Street. That was, like to my mind, like at that time, the busiest uh, trading street in Sligo Town. It had everything, you know, everything you wanted from, you know, from... You know, every walk of life, whatever you wanted to go shopping, it had it in Castle Street. I had 17 years of good hair training in Horns Menswear, and I opened up, as I say, in 94. It was like the shop wasn't much bigger than this room, Daniel. I know it's kind of about four or 500 square foot. It was tiny. You know, I seen one of the lads that I knew was doing a bit of work in it, and I knew I just like to look into it. I knew that was it. It felt right. You know, it, it felt right. Like I've always, like I've always went when we got instinct. I just looked at that, you know, I mightn't have had the confidence to do it, you know, or I thought about maybe opening up my own business. But, you know, when I looked in the door, I looked at the location, the size of it, and I said, that's it, you know, and like from there on in, that's how it started. I had no money. I went to the banks, I was looking for about four or five thousand, mm. couldn't, get, couldn't get the money. And that was in 94? Uh, that was in 94, couldn't get it. I went to a couple of banks, a couple of suppliers that I'd that had built up a really good uh, relationship, you know, through trade. So they helped me out to give me the extra bit of credit, maybe an extra 60 days credit and pay me bills and that. So that's how it started. It's an anxious uh, 60 days. It was, and I was, you know, I have to say, you know, looking back, it was, uh, you know, a really nervous time because it was a big risk, you know, and, and whatever. But I knew what I could do. Like, I had the experience at the business. I really enjoyed it. And, like, I just went for it. I didn't certainly go into business thinking... You know, I'm going to make money in here. Like, I just opened that shop because I enjoyed the business. It was as simple as that, you know. Is that good advice for, for, for young entrepreneurs now, if you were meeting them? Would you say to them, follow your gut? You know, would, yeah. would you say, if you have a passion for it, you're going to be successful in it? Two, two, two nice yeah. little pearls of wisdom there. Well, absolutely. Like, if I had to say, like, it was on a chart, it was to go one to five, money would be the fifth thing. Like, it might be... It's kind of probably the most important, like, because you can't survive in a business without good cash flow. You can't survive in a business without money coming in. But if you have the first couple of things, like, uh, number one, like the knowledge of what you're doing, and you have got the good work ethic, and you know, like, prepared to work hard with, and you have the, you know, the confidence that you can do it, you're going a long, long way there. Like after that, things just fall into place. You and know? bring us then. From from Castle Street to your current uh, place, where you you took over the old bank there. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful building. How long have you been in? Yeah, there? we're we're in the bank. I bought it. We moved. We had like in the middle of that, we had another premises. It was across the road from where I opened. So we had a big move. It used to be Focus Ladies Store at the time. So that closed down. We it's about fifteen hundred square feet, just across from Lady Air, and so it was a really good location as well. That was a really big move at the time. But we were there about three or four years. Then the bank, the Bank of Ireland came on the market and we were trading really well, you know. And it's kind of, we, you know, I thought to myself, I remember just chatting in the shop, uh, the lads in the shop when it was advertised in the Sligo Champion that day. I said, I'm going to try and buy that, you know. So look at, I, it happened and it happened at the time, like it was for tender. On the end of September, like 2001, in the meantime, 9-11 happened. Mm. Okay. So, you know, the guide price, the asking price that were looking for this property, it just came way down. A lot of people got scared. They didn't know what was coming down the road, you know, the world economy and different things. At this, I went when we got instinct again. I knew what I could do with this building. And I knew, you know, what I could turn it into. And... It came down within my price line and that, and I went for it, and you know. And you have now this this fabulous city centre, prestigious building, great location. You've got your your main shop outlet at the at the front. Yeah, uh, yeah. You drive a value proposition pretty hard, I think. You, you know, be hard to it's hard to beat you in terms of value. <laughs> you're yeah. you're always driving that pretty close to the front of the shop. You've yeah. got the the suits down at the back, etc. Mm -hmm. And I know you do the the formal wear, etc. As yeah, well. Yeah. But now the next step for you yeah. is beyond the physical presence. You're going to online. Yeah. Look, as we have, like EJs has developed it into a shop. Like we do people uh, shopping in EJs from all over the country. Like generally, you know, people they love the Sligo area. They might come to Sligo twice a year. We see them in twice a year, and you know, they come in and buy a bit of gear and have the crack with the lads you know and they go home happy or whatever um 
EJ has, has kind of gone gone from it's the next level. We have customers, we have loads of lads that immigrated and they're the other side of the world, a lot of good customers and they still leave to still like to keep in touch with EJs, you know, in some shape and form. So we've been asked a lot about it over the last two to three years, but it really is a big ask and it's a big thing to take on. So certainly over the last 12 months, we've been putting a lot of effort to go online. I uh, wonder, you, you've touched on something though, which is very important because you have these connections with your customers mm -hmm. that maybe your average clothes shop mightn't have. I, I go in, I buy clothes in a shop, that shop will never cross my mind again. Whereas I know when people go into EJs, they're chatting to the lads, there's this atmosphere in there, this sort of collegiality about the place. And it is a great personality as a brand. And obviously that's why yeah. you've been able to bring through what you've done in the videos. But your, your shop has got a great personality. How did you engender that? In the like I never call EJs mine. You know, if I talk about EJs, it's ours like you know the boys are so much part of it like the whole staff down there it's not mine and it's not me or it's not i like it's us you know it's part of you know the work that has to be done down there generally i'm stuck in the middle of it you know maybe a, a little bit less lately but i wouldn't ask anyone to do anything that i wouldn't do myself we have a little bit of fun i enjoy the boy you know i enjoy the confidence that they have i enjoy their en enthusiasm about the whole thing and you know that that's and what, that what gives happens? me motivation as well. When, when when there's a difficult month in the in the bad times and God knows yeah, it's yeah. been difficult over the last couple of years for every business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in those difficult months when things are tough and things are tight, yeah, how do yeah. you you keep that sort of from filtering down onto the staff and and upsetting them? How do you you keep everybody happy and content and focused? Yeah, it was. I'd say you know, two thousand and seven not so bad but 2008 2009 and 2010 there really were three really scary years we were you know there was times on a saturday you're kind of sitting there we went from a really you know it was kind of very intense and really busy days we went from you're waiting on a customer to come in the door and the people just stopped spending so like we had to evolve and we changed and that you know we the staff you know everyone kind of worked together you know they worked you know, the, they, they had to take the pain as well as, you know, EJs. We were all there. We were kind of one team. You know, they worked the extra few hours. We'll say, for example, the staff uh, work Sundays for free, you know. That's that's how really? it was. But they didn't, they didn't lose any hours. You know, their hours weren't cut or whatever. There was still good buzz around the place. We tried to keep it interesting, tried to keep it, you know. We'd be strong at the marketing. Yeah, you are. It's, you know, like anything that was going, you know, we were going for it at the time. But it really was a tough time. The, uh, the recession kind of you know it has changed our business because the recession you had to go out and you had to seek new brands and you had to chase new product and still had to be good quality that we like to always give but it's the price had to be right for people and out of that like a lot of bra brands have evolved and they've changed as well so we've got some really good suppliers you know like uh, really good quality mm. at really good prices and you know we drove that message home and so you you're know. going to bring that online now. It's, yeah. And, and to, to go online in the way you're planning is no small thing. You're, you're not just banging up a wee bit of a website. You're putting your full stock, your full shop, everything yeah. up online. You're going to be able to facilitate orders around the globe and hopefully yeah. grow and develop a, a whole new strand to your business. Yeah, well, you know... I've I'd say around the globe might be a little bit pushing it a wee bit. Like if we, you know, we have a customer in America or a customer in Australia, certainly it's great to get it. But, you know, our, our, our target is going to be the Irish market. I know we're only a small country, but it's still a big market. You have up in 5 million people in between North and South. And, you know, the main, as I say, you know, we have people in Dublin, we have people in Cork, we have people, we have people all around the country, you know, that come and shop in EJs. They're kind of they're selling our product as well because they're telling their friends or whatever. So, and we'll certainly take a different point, a different view on the marketing side of it. We'll try and get our name out there. We feel maybe next day delivery will be a very good thing for us. You know, like we we're going to have a lot of competition. You have ASOS or whatever. They're all out there, the big boys. But you know, it takes them two or three days maybe. That's one of the angles we'll take. Buy it today, we'll have it tomorrow for you. Things like that. And plus yeah. people will have that that 
recognition of your online presence through the videos. Yeah, and yeah. It's yeah. sort of it, your experience of 21 years in this trade and then some 17 odd years previous to that, you know, yeah. and, um, you've had a lot of experience. You've had yeah. um, a lot of contacts with great suppliers, as you say, giving yeah. you great quality. And to be able to have come out of this recession as a better, tighter company, yeah. one that has kept your staff interested, yeah. intrigued and on board and heading into a whole brave new adventure in terms of online sales, to me, I think is commendable straight out of the, the Harvard Business School book of how to do things. Yeah, funny. Well, I find, you know, myself personally, we, all, we always have to be looking ahead. You know, I'd never kind of sit back if we had a bad day today and like the minute we walk out the door, it's over and it's done with it. We're thinking of tomorrow and whether it be a good, something good happened during that day. Like whatever happens, it's happened. Like I, you know, it's just a personality that I am or whatever. You know, I never sit back and it was always pushing ahead and there was always something new down the road. So, you know, the online thing was, as I say, it was something that was there, it was always in our minds. But like the core of our business, you know, still, like it won't change the way we work in EJ Menswear. You know, we, we, we have the staff, we have the product, we have the prices, we have the quality. You know, we have a formal hire business that's catering for about 300 weddings a year. Wow. Each wedding has to be 100% perfect, you know. It's, it's just such a busy spot to be around. We have two tailors on the go full time alterations we don't charge for alterations no matter what shape or size a customer is coming in that door they go out the door fit it sometimes more times than not the same day you know with people traveling one of our strengths there people come in the door and say look i need a suit or whatever but i'm going back to wherever i am tomorrow galway or wherever so look at we'll we'll have it altered for you we've our tailor upstairs well top, it, so they're going out the door happy and it's that focus on customer service that I think is at the core of your business and it shows because of you know how you've invested in your marketing, getting your brand out there and it has brought you out the far side of this recession as a, a much better company, uh, one that I think a lot of people can learn from and what you've done both online, in store, with your staff, everything to be commended and Eamon, it is great to see you continuing on to, to greater and, and bigger successes yeah, and yeah. We, we await the next installment of your videos yeah. <laughs> with bated breath. You'll be first to know Daniel. Uh, <laughs> well, thanks. I want to thank you for coming in and yeah. joining us on Up and Running. Thanks Daniel.